Hello guys, my best friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Today, I will be going over chirality and I will be showing you an easy method to differentiate if two compounds are enantiomers or if two compounds are diastereomers. We're gonna get into all of this. Also, at any point in the video, if you have a question about what I am covering or if you are confused, please let me know in the comment section and then hopefully I can make another video and clear up your concern. So what does it mean to be chiral? In organic chemistry, just in chemistry in general, it's when a carbon center with four groups attached and all those four groups are different groups. I'll explain what this means in a second. The structure though, must not have an internal plane of symmetry. So what does that mean? Let's look at these glasses, these spectacles. So, in this pair of glasses, we can see that the left-hand side has a green lens and the right-hand side has a green lens. And these lenses are exactly the same. So I could draw a mirror plane. And I wanna think of mirror planes as chopping something in half in some way and seeing if the left side is equal to the right side. So if I chopped, bah, 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 chop these glasses in half, is the left side equal to the right side? Yes, they're the exact same. In contrast, if you had a pair of glasses where the left lens is not equal to the right lens, I could not say that there is an internal plane of symmetry because the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side. So now for the chemistry component. Let's go over a chiral carbon center. So a chiral carbon center is a carbon that is going to have four different groups. So group A, group B, group C, and group D. And if it is chiral, groups A, B, C, and D would all be different. So let's do an example of a chiral carbon center. So let's say A is a bromine group. B is a chlorine. D is a methoxy group. And C is just some alkyl. We can see that the pink group is different than the green group, which is different than the purple group, which is different than the white group. So this carbon is a chiral carbon. In contrast, we can have an eight chiral carbon center. So this would mean that two of these groups or more would need to be the same. So let's say group A is a hydrogen and group B is also a hydrogen. It doesn't matter what C and D are. This carbon already does not classify as chiral because two of these groups are exactly the same. So therefore, this carbon would not be chiral. It doesn't matter if these are hydrogens or if they're other groups. So what if this was a bromine and A was a bromine? Well, bromine is equal to bromine. So this carbon is still not chiral. So now, in organic chemistry, we're gonna have to compare structure A to structure B, structure A to structure C, and we're gonna have to define relationships between them. To do this, the easiest thing to do is to define the R versus S configuration of each chiral center on each structure, and then compare them. Whoops, did not mean to put a ruler. So now let's go over how to determine R versus S for a chiral center. So I'm gonna go over two situations. Situation number one is when H is gonna be on a dash. So every carbon has to make four bonds correct. So find your carbon, your chiral carbon, most likely going to be some carbon where they indicate to you um, some group on a wedge or a dash. So now we have the bromine is on a wedge and we see that this hydrogen group is on a dash. So this is case number one. Whenever hydrogen is on a dash, you forget it's there. You literally don't care about it anymore. You could even erase it if you, if you felt to do so. So let's say I erase it. So now, starting at the chiral carbon, I'm going to go atom by atom, going away from the car chiral carbon in each direction and compare the atomic number of each of the groups. And the highest atomic number group will be the top priority group. So here, going out one atom in each direction, I hit a bromine, I hit a carbon, and I hit an oxygen. So bromine versus carbon versus oxygen. What has the highest atomic number? The bromine does. So the bromine wins and hence would be priority group number one. So this would be group number one. So now I forget the bromine is there and I must compare the other groups. So now I have a carbon versus an oxygen. Who wins? Carbon versus an oxygen. Well, the oxygen wins. So oxygen would be group number two. And then carbon would be group number three. Okay, so I've defined all three priority groups. And then we do not care about number four, which is the hydrogen in the back. So now starting at number one, I'm gonna draw a rounded arrow towards number two. So one goes to two, then draw another rounded arrow 
two goes to three, rounded arrow. And then three goes all the way up and over and back to one. And I'm gonna connect all these arrows in a circular motion and ask, what type of spiral is this? Is it an R type spiral? which would be clockwise, or if it is an S-type spiral, which would be anti-clockwise. So this, to me, is clockwise. Therefore, this is a clockwise circle, therefore it is R. So now, case number two. Situation number two is if H is on a wedge. So step one is going to be forget the H is there again. Commonality trend. So now I'm going to compare all the groups again. Well, I knew from before that bromine wins, has the highest atomic number. And then the oxygen, two. And then the carbon is three. Then what do I do after this? I connect them. One goes to two. Two goes to three. Three goes up and over and back to one. What kind of circle is this? Oh, it's a clockwise again. So is this R? No, you cross out the R and you say it is the other thing. So S. If hydrogen is on a wedge, whatever you come up with, once you forget the hydrogen is there, you just say it's the opposite. So if I initially would have made an anti-clockwise circle, then I would have crossed that out and said it was R. In this situation, because we say that this is R, that means we say, actually, no, it is S. So this is S. That is all. So now that we've covered these um, things that we must know, we can now talk about the differences between an enantiomer and a diastereomer using this chiral chart that I like to use and that I used um, and taught myself when I was in the course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each structure, so starting at structure A, and find each of the chiral centers. So let's label this chiral center A, or chiral center number one, with the bromine group. And now on each of my other structures, I'm also gonna say this is chiral center number one. So find the bromine chiral carbon, one. And then I'm gonna find group number two, so it's gonna be the OH group, the OH group, the OH group, this is gonna be number two. Number one was with the bromine. And then number three is going to be with the CH3 group, the methyl. After I've defined this, I am then going to go chiral center by center on each of the structures and define R versus S. So going atom by atom, starting at this pink carbon, the bromine would win. So that'd be group number one. And now here, I could compare a carbon versus a carbon. Okay, well, they're the same, what do I do? So let's define this as a green carbon versus a purple carbon. Ask, what is this carbon attached to? So it's attached to two H's and another carbon. So the green one is attached to two H's and another carbon. What is the purple carbon attached to? Well, it's attached to an oxygen, a hydrogen, and another carbon. So it's attached to an oxygen, a carbon, and another hydrogen. And I did this in decreasing atomic number. Find one of the groups that beats the other group. So oxygen beats a carbon. So therefore, this side wins. So this would be direction number two. So then direction number three by consequence would be this way because the hydrogen is out in the back. So one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one, three goes to one. So this would be a clockwise R. So this is gonna be R. So now going to the oxygen chiral center. So carbon, starting at the chiral carbon, I'm going to go atom by atom and see which group has the highest atomic number. So oxygen versus a carbon versus a carbon. Oxygen wins, group number one. So now I'm going to say, okay, well, this carbon, this purple carbon is the same as this purple carbon. So which group wins? Which group is priority two? Well, this carbon, what is it attached to? Let's label this one as blue this time. What's well, attached to a bromine, a hydrogen, and a carbon. So bromine, carbon, and hydrogen. This purple carbon is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and an H. So a carbon, a carbon, and an H. So right away, bromine beats out the carbon. So this group would be group number two. This would be group number two. This is group number three because we have the hydrogen in the back. So one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one. So this is anti-clockwise, so it is S. Finally, we have this final chiral carbon. So this is going to be group number one, two, three. If you go through the same priority group designation, so we go one to two, 
two to three, three down to one. So this is also going to be an anti-clockwise S. So now I'm going to label this on my chart. So structure A, cover center, center number one, the pink one was R, the purple one was S, and the green one was S. Okay, I'm going to go to structure number B and do the same thing. So I already defined the labeling. This is group one, two, and three. Nothing is going to change except for the bromine is in the back. So connect the dots again. One to two, two to three, three back to one. This is an R, but since bromine is on a dash, what does that mean? Well, that means that you have this hydrogen group on a wedge. Therefore, whatever it was before, it's going to be the opposite. So before, and number one, this was R. So hence, this one's going to be S. Same with the OH. The OH used to be on a wedge, now it is on a dash. So that means the hydrogen is what's on that wedge. So that means whatever it was before, it must be the opposite. So before it was an S, now it has to be R. Same with the green. The green must be R now. Because nothing changed besides the fact that one of the priority groups turned from a wedge to a dash. So now I'm gonna label that. So structure number B, it goes S, R, R. So what is the relationship between structure A and structure B? So what I want you to do is go to each of the chiral carbon uh, designations, R versus S, and see if each one of them flips from structure A to structure B. So does R flip to S? Yes. S flips to R? Yes. S flips to R? Yes. If they all flip, then they are enantiomers. So enantiomers. Now let me show you something different. Let's compare structure A to structure C. And we'll see the difference here. So now if I go to C, chiral center number one, the pink one, this is the exact same situation as in uh, compound number A. So I can just say this one is R. And then here I can say that the uh, chiral, chiral carbon number two is the same situation as B. So this would also be R. And then same as the CH3, it's the same situation as B, so it would also be R. So what would I do? I'd go label all of these. So carbon number three, chiral carbon number three was R. Chiral carbon number two was R. And then chiral carbon number one was R. So now let's see from structure A to structure C, what happens? Do they all flip? R stays R. Oh, now S flips to R. S flips to R. Doesn't matter. If one of them does not flip, they are diastereomers. So structures A and C are diastereomers. Whereas A and B are N and T O MERS. So here's a question for you. If you knew nothing about a structure, you didn't know what it looked like, but they told you there was, you know, three chiral centers. Let's call this structure structure X. And all you knew about structure X was the fact that the centers were S, S, and R. Okay, well, R stays R, so it doesn't flip. S stays S, it doesn't flip. S stays S, it doesn't flip. Okay, well, if none of them flip, then these are identical. If they all flip from R to S or vice versa, then they are in and tumors. And if x is greater to or equal than 1, flips, therefore, diastereomer. Bada bing, bada boom. I hope this makes sense. I can do more examples of this. Um, if you guys would like, let me know if you would like another video on this in the comment section down below. Um, if not, um, I hope this clears up your concerns with defining an antiomers versus diastereomers. Once again, please leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content to support me. Um, and let me know what video you want me to cover next.